Our next speaker is somebody that I and many of the people in this room, I think, have been on the phone with many, many times, and yet actually somehow never met in person. So it was very exciting uh, about 45 minutes ago when I met Carol Hamilton in person, and uh, she's going to tell you a little bit about the FedEx Toolkit and the FedEx Project in general. Okay, so uh, thanks, Mike, at all for um, inviting me to, to talk to you today at this CBGAP celebration. Okay, all right, so just a little bit of, um, a little bit of context. We've been going for almost as long as DB Gap, which was kind of a surprise to me. Yeah, Steve Sherry's nodding. Um, so this was originally started in 2007. Um, then we moved to a, a genomic resource uh, award um, vehicle in 2013. And the really important part of this slide is just a few weeks ago, um, we were awarded um, a, a yet again a, a renewal for, of the genomic resource in theory are on track for another five years. So this is really, it, it's great to be here. and. Great timing. So the really sort of the, the, the key things about Phoenix. So what makes Phoenix really different, and this is that it really uses what's now a very well-established consensus-based pro process. It really is driven by the scientific community. The idea being that if you engage the community, that the toolkit will really um, serve their needs. It has evolved over, uh, the, over the 10 years. So initially it was focused on common complex diseases. And it was really the impetus from Genome, uh, Project Scientist is here, um, Aaron Ramos, the, the impetus um, was to provide common measures for genome-wide association studies. Okay, but over, over time the scope has broadened. Um, when we started phase two, the first working group was rare genetic conditions. And um, we've expanded, the scope has expanded um, certainly to include clinical, translational, and more broadly epidemiological studies. So not just GWAS anymore. It is a catalog of measures. It's freely available for use. It's intended to promote collaboration, cross-study analysis. You can browse. You can search. The other thing about a uh, toolkit is that, is that it's intended um, to provide all the information that you need to um, properly implement me the measure, to use the measure. And the idea is not that it, it, that it um, inhibits innovation in any way or study design, but that the study uh, measures that you need for study specificity are incredibly important, but that by adding some standard measures to your study that increase uh, collaborative um, opportunities that it increases the scientific impact overall of individual studies. And here at dbGAP, we have a quite a long-standing collaboration um, between Phoenix and dbGAP, not quite the whole 10 years, but probably pretty close. Um, why use standard measures? You've already heard a little bit about the importance of, of data sharing and standard measures certainly make um, uh, data sharing easier. Um, study findings require validation, increased sample size, of course, for increased statistical power in GWAS, but even for non-GWAS studies, certainly increased statistical confidence. And then just kind of just thinking practically, look, if you look across studies, you know, many studies and conditions share common risk factors. Why not measure the, why not collect the data in, in the same way? Uh, and this is just a nice schematic, um, the idea of, of individual studies having commonality that makes it easier to combine results. And again, um, particularly important for detecting more subtle associations or more complex associations like gene by environment interactions. I don't want to go through all the details, but again, this is, science, this is driven by the scientific community. We have a steering committee. We have liaisons from most of the institutes and centers across NIH as intended to be a, a two-way communication. Um, working groups of experts are who actually um, select the measures for the toolkit. There is outreach to the scientific community to try to get their input to make sure that we are doing the right thing. And we've now been in business for so long that um, we've had to um, engage expert review panels to review some of the domains of measures that have been in the toolkit for, you know, uh, six, seven years. So we're, you know, it's a balance. You want standard measures, but um, as science changes, if we're not careful and make it responsive to the needs of the community, then we'll fail. So it's a balance between Keep, keeping what's not broken and bringing in things that are really new that are needed. Um, definitions, we're not going to talk a lot about this today, but domain, I'll show you the domains. Measure is really almost a concept, and protocol, the way it's used for Phoenix, is really the way the measure is collected. That's the, the assessment methodology. Um, the other thing that's important to know about Phoenix measures is the criteria, and this, again, this comes from the steering committee. Clearly defined, well-established, broadly applicable, or reproducible. The idea here is that um, working groups were not allowed to bring in measures that weren't well-established. They couldn't go with bleeding edge. 
There were other, certain other things that they could do with those measures, but this was really um, tried and true. Um, this shows you the breadth. So this is um, 25 to date. Actually, geriatrics is just underway. And um, we just finished up. So 21 was in phase one. Then we did 24 more in phase two, um, finishing up geriatrics. We did just finish up uh, the pregnancy working group. And um, just really, really cool, so I have to mention it. We, the working group put together a manuscript led by Kingdom Malinowski. The, the, the chair was Siobhan Dolan. And they put that paper together so fast, I couldn't believe it. It was submitted to American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology, and it was accepted without revision and has been published. When I sent out the thank you note to the working group for their great contribution and so on and so forth, I could actually say thank you for you know, getting this paper submitted. And I just, the only other comment related to that is that what the Phoenix Toolkit is, is absolutely dependent on these working groups and the quality and the effort of the people who contribute to this project is just continues to amaze me. Project organization, this is a cooperative agreement. Um, that's enough said. And then something has happened over the years where um, near, I guess, near the end of, of phase one, um, Kevin Conway approached us and said, wow, we really like what you did with, with, substance, with um, alcohol, tobacco, and other substances, which was one of the domains. They said, but we really would like to provide some additional measures for our substance abuse and addiction researchers. And so we did a supplemental project and, and added some depth um, in that area. And then this was followed by NIM, who came to us. Greg Farber is a project scientist. And we did several working groups for NIM, including eating disorders, um, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, and most recently, uh, well, anyway, that's not. Um, and then the tobacco regulatory science um, with Kay Wonky is a project scientist. And also sickle cell disease research with Ellen Werner, who's in the audience somewhere today. And we also look like we'll be doing um, possibly some additional work for NHLDI in the near future. Just showing you the toolkit. This is just to show that measures is not just questionnaires. It's a fairly wide range of, of uh, data collection modes. This is just a filter for our search engine. We do a lot of collaboration, um, including with REDCap and dbGaP. And the main thing with dbGaP was to help use Phoenix measures to identify dbGaP studies for cross-study analysis. And here, just to show you what we've done, and this has just been this has just been great over the past year or so. So dbGaP moved to fasted browsing, and Phoenix is now in the CDE facet. And you can do, in the advanced search, you also see Phoenix. You can search, and you can get studies and um, variables return. And then again, with a Phoenix filter, again, studies and variables return. So you can get variable IDs that are related um, to specific um, Phoenix variables. Likewise, or on the flip side of the coin, you can also get to dbGaP variable mappings from within the Phoenix toolkit. Um, and just showing off one more thing in our in the in the actual toolkit. So after you've selected your measures for that you want to use in your study, this data dictionary right here is dbGaP compatible. Um, this one is REDCap compatible, so you can take it over and and load it into your study in REDCap. We get more happiness from this data dictionary that is compatible with dbGaP. It generates it on the fly. It's custom for the measures you've selected. Um, people came at one point, Kim Trike will remember this, they said, can you do all our measures for us? That we could do that. Um, so we have, uh, this is just a little bit of stats. What has really helped is here, we've been, Phoenix has been mentioned in quite a number of ever-increasing funding um, opportunity announcements. And it has, Phoenix measures have been included in some major, major initiatives with major acknowledgments. This is a huge, huge, huge project. My, the RTI team um, is, is terrific. My, um, my, my co-I Hendershot, Erin Ramos, her analyst Maggie Ginoza, steering committee, right? All these working groups, 25 working groups, um, the, the, the leads, collaborators. This has been a really incredible opportunity. And uh, we, we're really looking forward to the next five years to um, make it even better. You didn't, you didn't think I could make it, did you? You were close. <laughs> uh, any questions for Carol? I'll just make a comment. Um, so so the, she mentioned uh, these sort of like expert committees and working groups. And uh, something came out on pulmonology a couple of days ago. 
And uh, yeah, like some FedEx types, right? Yeah? No? Maybe not? I forwarded it to somebody. I asked you guys if I could forward it. And anyway, so I forwarded this to a polynologist collaborator of mine, and he was so excited. Oh, he was like, great. these vocabularies are so important, and I get to weigh in on this. And he was, he was so excited. And, and it tells you how, how, how big Phoenix is, because I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I believe you. <laughs> but if you have questions about that, ask Carol Lee. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I did want to mention there that, that you know, that it has really grown. And, and now and we are, one of the main things that we want to do with, with the phase three is to improve, improve navigation. There are now a total, including the, the deep dive supplements and all of those domains, there are 523 measures and 689 protocols in the toolkit. There is a wealth of information in there. Great. Well, thank you again. Oh, and if you, and if you, use, it, if you use it and have comments, there's a feedback. Hit feedback. Tell us what you think. <laughs> thank you.